predominantly a talk about Botox and fillers. Has anybody here, it's not going to raise your hand, but we have to. I wonder if anybody has zero experience with this stuff. So everybody knows a little bit, right? Okay, I'll go, go to the next, next slide and I'll kind of just go through the stuff. Um, the injectable, the best thing about the injectable is there's no cutting, there's no anesthesia, there's no general anesthesia, and the results are pretty much immediate. Botox takes about a week for it to kick in, otherwise the results are pretty immediate. Um, go to the next slide real quick. There's several areas that we can treat um, when it comes to aging, and that really depends on where the, where the lack of depth, where the deficit is. Um, the most common area we treat is in between the eyebrows, that's the glabella. We can also treat the forehead muscles. This picture is basically just showing the face and the muscle, the muscle structures that we try to um, treat. This Botox is probably the best thing to use when it comes to muscle motion. Botox is a muscle relaxant versus a filler, which actually fills in a groove or, or elevates the skin, puts volume back in the tissue. Botox is strictly a muscle relaxant, and that's all it does. Uh, so with Botox, we can do around the eyes, the muscles around the eyes, the mid face, um, some of the muscles here we can also do, we don't do these very often, the marionette lines right around, around the mouth, we can also treat nasolabial folds, that's another area that we treat with fillers, and jowling lines, these are the lines that, these are the, uh, these are the, uh, the, the, the big balls in form of the lower part of the mouth over time, and I'll show where that comes in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a really good diet. This is a to kind of show what we treat when it comes to um, aging skin. The two most things that we're trying to fight is volume loss and gravity. It's volume loss and gravity that gives that gives it gives, gives, gives us a older appearance with the wrinkles and the lines. Um, normal aging, we lose volume in the skin, and then gravity takes over. The way you can look at that is the diagrammatic here is really good. Kind of illustrate when we're younger, you yeah. think we just get as great. It's like plump. As we get older, you start to lose volume in the, in the skin, you lose fat in the skin, and you start looking like a little more pretty. So that kind of where that picture goes. It's just a progression. Um, and then once you lose volume, gravity will just pull everything down. That's where you start seeing the jowling, that's where you start seeing folds, that's where you start seeing hollowing in the center, and these are all normal stuff. And, before, the only thing we had was to do, lift, to do surgery, to kind of lift the skin. Uh, now, in order to try to avoid doing the surgery or catching this stuff early enough and doing things every day, kind of stepwise, um, you can almost eliminate surgery. So, go to the next slide. Anytime we try, to, uh, we try to treat the skin to bring it back, we got to look at the anatomy. The anatomy is really, really huge. Um, the most important thing that we have to look at is symmetry. Uh, symmetry is what gives us a useful look, and, and actually, what's considered beautiful is symmetry. Um, they've done studies where you, where they've done studies, they show people pictures of people that are a little bit asymmetrical, like when uh, one eyebrow is the other, one side is shifted, and they try to gauge what's considered beautiful. It's clearly demonstrated that of any asymmetry, when you compare someone who's completely symmetrical, the symmetrical person looks more attractive. And that's what we try to recreate when we do some of these um, procedures. We can correct some asymmetry um, while we do these. Uh, the other thing we want to look at is what's a marker for beauty is this straight jawline. Uh, the jowling is what kind of forms when you get older. You start seeing the little heaviness coming down here. And that's predominantly loss of volume in the middle of the face, and everything just kind of pulls down. You start seeing this kind of pain. The, the other thing we look for is higher cheekbones. High cheekbones give give face a good structure, and we can actually replenish a lot of that just using injectable fillers. Uh, a lower lip that's a little bit larger, a little bit more centrally pouted. Um, Horizontal oral curvature. These are basically, it's describing this corner of the mouth where it's nice and parallel, it's going nice and straight. As we get older, these start to drop down a little bit. We start seeing the kind of the corner of the mouth drop over. Uh, next slide. This is just a, this is a, a graphic from Botox. Botox is a literature. It's just showing where the muscles sit. Uh, Botox was a it's physician administered, non surgical aesthetic treatment, FDA approved. Um, it's approved for 18 to 65. We, we've used it for way over 65 as well. And age is not really that much we're determined anymore. But when they did the FDA studies, 65 was kind of the range that 65 was their cutoff for the study. We've used it for older all the time. Um, now, 
Yeah, this is, an, this is just to show the most common area we use Botox for is in between the eyebrows. Um, the FDA approval was originally for in between the eyebrows. The, we've been using it off label for <laughs> most of the face, uh, but clearly when it comes to you with the FDA approved, it was only in the middle here. Yes, you do. And this just shows where the, where the muscle, where we inject on the muscle. This was him, uh, I think it was about 10 days out. This is about 10 days after the treatment. You can see how he's making the same muscle motions. It's just what he can do with that thing. He's restraining really hard. You can see how much he's pushing. He's working hard, and that's why as much movement as he got. So why, why is the, the more wrinkles on his nose? <laughs> what you're noticing, okay, what he's <laughs> I'm looking at this one. He, in this one, it looks like he's not squinting as hard around the eyes. He's almost compensating. Because I, I know I'm, I remember this guy. I asked him to squint really close to the after picture. And he couldn't do this, but he's just doing this instead. Yeah, okay. Which really, I didn't touch these muscles, right? These are all the same muscles, but he's pushing hard. You can see it. He's, he's pushing, he's pushing hard. Yeah, because I mean, on this one, you can see, you know, all of the wrinkles here, but then on this one, it was like, okay, the wrinkles are on there, but they went he's everywhere pushing. else. They didn't move. Yeah. Okay. No, no, he's, he's pushing really hard for you to make things. Okay. He's working hard, so I appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's a joke. About 24. Oh, wow. It might have been one more, but it's right around there. Oh, men, what is that? Men will more. No, we don't. Botox, Botox uses a, these arbitrary numbers called units. Um, Botox, when they first came out with it, they did they uh, they were the one that created the whole the whole unit system. Okay. When you get a vial of Botox, it's just a dry jar. It's actually a good time to talk about. You, you see a lot of you see ads and stuff in the newspaper or you know where ma articles and magazines they always talk about Botox units. Units are an arbitrary number that the company came out with. Um, in order to get the studies through the FDA. What they did was, when we get a vial of Botox, it's a small little jar, it's a drop. You're, all you see is a little bit of crystal powder in the bottom. We have to reconstitute this in the office. When you reconstitute it, no matter how much liquid I put in there, the total amount of units in that vial is still on that, right? So for us, there, there's, a, there's a standardization, it's 2.5 cc's in each jar. Some people use uh, three cc's, still acceptable. Anything beyond that, you're starting to really dilute the product intensely. Um, and with, the product will still work at, you know, with higher dilutions, it just doesn't last. And then it spreads. And then, you know, I see the other economy you know, of Botox, like five dollars a unit. Clearly, they're either giving you less Botox or they're just not constantly right? Because we've all heard that, how it's still how, how, yeah. how do I know they're not doing it? How do I know they are doing it? Can we ask them what the CCs are? You can ask them anything you want. It's so easy to lie to you because, listen, when I walk into a room with a syringe of product, that whole, it's clear. It looks like one, right? Whether there's five units of Botox or 50 units of Botox, it looks exactly the same. It really depends on the, where you go to and if you trust them or not. It really is a matter of trust. So it they should be, what should it be? Yeah. They should be diluting with 2.5 units, I mean 2.5 cc's or 3 cc's. Okay, so that's the proper. That's the proper, that's the proper. They can lie to you though. I mean, they can, you've got, they can lie to you. it's easy. What do you got to do 2.5? That's what it says in the literature. They'll probably say 2.5 anyway, whether they do it or not. This works, just from 2.5. I've had some that still lasting me for three months and some that's lasting me. Oh, totally. It's a, remember, Botox is only supposed to last three. If it's lasting you nine, you are awesome. Right? That's amazing. I, I, well, I guess that's with age too. True, and metabolism. Uh, you meta the people, some people metabolize these products a little bit quicker, right? Um, some people don't. Some people are just a little slower, which is great for, for the product. So it's only supposed to last three months. Three months. Okay. It's supposed to last three months. You're getting, um, some people get four, you know? Four is not an uncommon number. Usually when I get the fives and sixes, those are very few select people that get that one. Uh, anyway, so this this was just showing injections in the forehead. Again, this is for training, not for you guys. So like the, you can at least see where we're going with with, with our injection sites um, and, and the muscles we're trying to attract. These, these are the muscles on the forehead. Next, this is a this is a young lady that we treated. We did the forehead. Next picture. This is about a week or two afterwards. She's looking up, same kind of concept. Uh, it works. You know, Botox is pretty awesome. It works. It's pretty consistent, which is why we kind of like it. Uh, this is showing the crow's feet around the eyes. Same location. This is her pre-treatment. Next. This 
is her after treatment. This is just a slide from the company, nothing special. This is just a Juvederm and the, the two kinds of Juvederm that we have. It's the third one that just came out, the Luma. And each one of these has a different characteristic, and we can get through all that in a second. Um, this is this is trying. This is going to show you where are the more, most common areas we use filler products. Now, we're just looking, I'm shifting over to fillers now. It's really important this thing with Botox is a muscle relaxant, and the fillers are skin filler. They actually go in the skin layers and fill or elevate the skin. Okay. Botox is completely different. Botox is a liquid. We inject it into the muscle to deactivate the muscle. And then the filler, we fill grooves, lines, and we can restructure jawlines, noses, and all that here. So now we're going to talk about the filling products. These are products that we under the skin to elevate. Uh, this is just a really good summary of all the areas that we typically use. Um, the most common area is the nasal labial fold, which is between the nose and the corners of the mouth. Uh, below the mouth, we often fill a lot as well. We, a lot of times, we do a jawline. Uh, the jawline, especially for the jawline, it helps. It doesn't correct the jawline, it masks the jawline. Because there's almost like a little, uh, there's almost a hole that kind of forms down here. We can we fill, in the line, we fill in that gap or, or hole to try to make that line a little bit more crisp and robust. Um, temples are becoming really popular now. As we get older, bone degradation and fat loss, the, uh, the temples start to hollow and people look a little bit more drawn. It's not a common area, but we do it. Um, nose, we can do the upper part of the nose. Some people have a really big, uh, really big indentation in the nose. That's just genetics. We can correct that as well. Uh, the cheeks are the cheeks are one of the my favorite areas to treat. The cheek, when we inject the cheeks, it gives me a really good scalpel, a really good uh, shelf to work with. It'll elevate the skin, project the skin out, and give you a little bit of lift. And for, for people, it, it's one of the it's one of the first areas that goes when, when we age. Mid face is a really common area. Fat loss, bone degradation, and then gravity. Not far, not far. So, um, some people like to do the uh, the earlobes. My Dr. Raskin's favorite area is the what? earlobes. What? Some people have these. Yeah, as we get older, you can hear about us. The earlobes start to go. Um, they get they get really thin and they get really uh, they get really crinkly. We put a little volume in there, and it's like. What about if you want it? Can't deal with these fillers. Holes that cover the when you do holes that were made in the ear, it's almost it's forming its uh, scar tissue in it. That's actually like it's healed over. You can't fill that. The only thing you can do is cut, re cut that hole and attach the edges again, and then you pull it out. You can't deal with these fillers because we're not. It, it's there's a scar tissue in there. It's already healed up. Uh, this is an image from the company again. I'm not impressed, but it's okay. You kind of get an idea. It's just a progression of how long the product, how how, how filled the person is after a duration. Um, what the they started? Two weeks, eight weeks, twenty-four weeks, seventeen months. It's just showing it, kind of going back a moment. Everything kind of dropping back. Your, as your, as you put these products in, your body starts to eat them, up. and just depending on your metabolism, you will just keep it and come back, you go back to where you started. One of the great things about these products is it also stimulates collagen in the skin, so you will get some lasting benefit as time goes on. So you, it, it's actually a really great thing to have. Yeah, the collagen that the collagen loss as time goes on is a really big problem. This is one of the pro this is one of our patients here. This is just showing her before's. Okay, and you can see what you look like after that. Nice little progression here. Uh, this is showing filling of the lips. So this, is a, this is a very young girl. You know, I'm not, it's not typical. We try, we, try to make, we try to make lips very big. Uh, this is immediately after treatment, so she has a lot of it, a lot of swelling. This will probably go down by 25% over, the, over about a week. Um, but when you do lips, you will get quite a bit of swelling in some people. Same girl you see for lips before, after, or after. Those are very big, by the way. I, I don't like them. To, to look kind of uh, this is one of the This is one of our own patients here. This is a little more reasonable, I think. Uh, you can see as we get older, you still will again it's a volume loss issue in the lips. Um, also, the lip order gets lost as we get older. We can release that as well. Uh, when we do that, it goes out a little bit easier. 
you actually have a more defined order where the the field is like that. This is before now. This is a little more reasonable. I would this to me looks really pretty. I mean, she just went from a little bit more crinkly to a little more full. Carry on. Liquid phase like, um, liquid phase like we've been talking about this whole time. You know, restores volume. We fill in the lines and the grooves. The beauty of it is there's no cutting, there's no stitching, there's no general anesthesia. The results are immediate. Average cost about twenty thousand dollars. When you compare that to a facelift, which is an annual from ten to twenty five thousand, it's a great alternative. And it's instant. You, know, you don't have to wonder. You don't have to wonder. Then how long does it last? <clears throat> it depends on the product we use. Uh, every product has its characteristics about duration. We have anything from four uh, four months to now we have a new case for two years. So. Can you, what we use more. can you break it up if some, let's say it doesn't come out right? Just, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. All of the, uh, there's actually two classes of fillers that we like to use. One is the hyaluronic acids. Those are the Restylane, Jupiter, uh, Perlane, Voluma, and then we have Radiast, which is a calcium-based product. All the ones that are hyaluronic acid, those can all be reversed within a matter of four, four hours. Four to 24 hours, you can just reverse everything. The Radiast, it's not so easy to reverse. That stone is not so easy. Uh, that one takes a lot of work, and I don't, I mean, you don't generally, you don't generally use Radiast unless, that, unless I'm super comfortable with the patient, or I know they're not going to ask me to return to reverse it because they've already done something in the past they're comfortable with. This just adds a little more volume and duration. This is the gentleman that I did, and as far as the feeling goes, now we the nasal labial fold, which is just the line right over here. This is immediately afterwards. Yeah, we already under his mouth as well. So you can just see how quickly the response starts. Immediate, duration wise, just depends on the product.